Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm joined on set by Chef and Taylor, Hezekiah Da Costa. Um, I just wanted to point out this uh, little apron I have that I have no right to be wearing next to an actual <laughs> chef. But I wanted to shout out In Patella. So if you guys can zoom in on this. Um, this is a great husband and wife team from Long Island. Anna and Miles, they make amazing paella, and they gave me this awesome apron. So I figured I'll wear it today say, while you do the actual. You. Thank you. Like, while you do the actual. Easy color. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but I'm thinking, I'm like, I'll put this on while you do the actual cooking. Um, so what do we have here exactly? Because um, I see some salmon, and I love salmon. So what are we doing besides, you know, the obvious? <laughs> All right. So today I wanted to do like a, like a healthy version of like a Asian and Caribbean fusion dish. Okay. So I went with brown rice. So I'm doing like a brown stir fried rice with a, um, like a jerk, jerk salmon with a coconut and green curry um, cream sauce. Oh my God. That sounds amazing. Okay. Right. Let's go to it. So what do we have to do? What, what are the first steps? How does first this happen? Step, Besides me, just, like, just got to make sure these, the these are hot okay. and um, slice the salmon and make sure my carrots are good. And then other than that, ready to go. Can I ask where you got that slice of salmon? Because that's a beautiful piece of salmon. Oh, I went to a market, like like a fresh um, fish market right right up the street. It's beautiful. Like, okay. make, making sure we getting local. Got okay, support nice. the Bronx. So it's local, right? So <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is definitely a Bronx mm -hmm. piece of fish. Yes, okay, man. beautiful. Awesome. Let's do it. So are these, are these uh, suitable yeah, for searing or are these okay? Nah, not yet. I feel like we're feeling for its energy. You know? exactly. It's like, is it? <laughs> All right, guys. So what you just saw there was something that I like to call Emily Snicket. It's a series of unfortunate events. But we survived it. We did it. We're here. We're actually on location right now. Chef, I'll let you tell the audience exactly where we are right now. All right. So we're at my aunt's house. <laughs> Very nice. We uptown in the Bronx, um, which is uptown. And I don't know, man. So what exactly, uh, which part of the BX is this? Um, this is 237th, so like we're right up the street from my family's restaurant, and That's it's right. called so House of Flavors. House of Flavors on uh, East 233rd, right? Mm -hmm. So it's actually pretty close to where we are right now. Um, I wanted to point out this mural here because I kind of love <laughs> it. I wanted to ask you real quick, what uh, scene from The Lion King is this? Because I oh. have these two guys looking at that dude. Right. Yeah, this is like the director's cut. Right, that's but the like, extended so version? So like, this okay. is the extended version. Did you make it? Like, shot right. this version, you know. Because I don't remember like... <laughs> I don't remember Mufasa smoking out of a coconut hookah. That's cool though. <laughs> I do love that. Awesome. This is actually a great space. So um, I actually wanted to thank you, like for real, about rolling with the punches yesterday. You were a gracious guest. You were super awesome. I know no problem. Things, thank you. Know, you. Thank you, man. I know things were a little wonky, but we make it happen. So we're here um, on location at Jaron's house, and we're gonna get back to what we were doing yesterday, which was that jerk salmon, right? Yes, sir. So all right. So before we get started, I actually want to um, point out what we have here. Uh, all of these beautiful little seasonings that are going to get on the jerk salmon here. So what's going on here? And then we'll get into the action. All right. So here we have all the ingredients for our stir fry. So we got some peppers, onions, um, some carrots I'm going to dice mm -hmm. up, some peas, garlic, ginger, um, scallions, and some brown, brown short grain rice for the stir fry to make it a little healthier. And then we got some fresh jerk sauce that my family in Jamaica makes, and I'm gonna add that to the salmon. Left it off yesterday. Awesome. So, so is, is jerk salmon something that you grew up eating? I mean, uh, tell me a little no. bit about your Caribbean roots, about your family, because um, because again, we mentioned that your uh, family has a restaurant not too far from here. So, tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about your upbringing, the type of foods that you grew up with, the flavors. Um, we spoke a little bit about. Ital cuisine, mm -hmm. um, and uh, th there's, but there's so many more facets to like, you know, Jamaican cuisine. So tell me about your upbringing food-wise. Um, not really a lot of jerk salmon. There's more when it comes to fish, more like snapper, um, mm -hmm. porgy. Yeah, there's like a like a very like a variety of fishes, but um, not really salmon too often. Just once in a blue, but um, a lot of um, like jerk or stewed chicken. Right. Um, so you kind oxtails. of, you, you kind oxtails of like is a, like on the pricier well, side. So that's like when yeah. you're getting a treat, you get some oxtails. Right. <laughs> so would you say that uh, growing up, um, you had a, a mix of like uh, fish and meat and poultry, or was it more fish, or was it more one type of? Um, it's a mix of a few different things. Um, so like for breakfast, we would have like um, ackee and saltfish, mm -hmm. but in Spanish it's called like bacalao. Yeah. So like we would have like a lot of ackee and saltfish, um, Johnny cakes for breakfast, yes. and like a lot of rice. All right, chef, so tell me what we're gonna be making today, por favor. All right, we're gonna be making some jerk salmon with a brown rice stir fried and a green and Jamaican curry coconut cream sauce. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, uh, we are here on location. 
at your aunt's house, and we're also not too far from your family's restaurant, House of Flavor. Tell me a bit about that. How long has it been in operation? What kind of food can people expect to get from there? Um, House of Flavor, um, primarily Caribbean, but my uncle can cook any type of food. So like he, oh, so um, in the kitchen. yeah, nice. um, he, he throws like anything that comes to mind on the menu. He used to throw like big parties back here, right. like for like the whole neighborhood. So in this space right here? Yeah, like we awesome. used to have like three, four hundred people like just pull up for his birthday and like flood out the back, the whole street. That's but, awesome. So am I the only person who's ever asked you about the mural? Oh, I'm sure a yeah, lot of actually, look, <laughs> they just look at us like, <laughs> And just walk away. <laughs> okay, so all right, so let's let's get to it because I know we've had this heating up for for a while, so we're gonna get that nice sizzle, right? Yeah. That we were like. So yeah, we wanted the sear we yesterday. We tried so hard to get this sizzle, <laughs> but okay, so let's let's get to it. Let's uh, let's get that salmon on there because honestly, man, I've been waiting two days for this. So uh, yeah, like you you were smelling it yesterday. Yes. All right. So I was all up in like the salmon. Then you had the curry going, and I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is the day. Yeah. And then actually. This is the curry sauce is in here now. So I love so, how small this is right yeah, now. Yeah, it's for that's, aesthetics. That's kind of awesome. Aesthetics. I love that. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> also for aesthetics. I gotta we got, say, you got did, you a you, beverage. Yes, you no. made a really good beverage yesterday. That that because of the way that things were going, we couldn't really put it on camera. But this is an amazing beverage. Can you tell me what that is right there? Um, so this is a prickly pear, um, soursop and pineapple with mama wana. Mm -hmm. So. Like just a, a ode to your culture, yes, my yes. culture, and a mix of the two. Cause keeping it, keeping it super Caribbean. Yeah, Caribbean, <laughs> and also um, soursop is also um, used in Asian culture and in Latin and Jamaican culture as yes. well. Yes. Awesome. So I think it's called. Um, I forgot. I forgot what it's, it's called. Okay. In, it's okay. In, as long as it tastes good, right? Yeah, I was gonna say you let well. me know. Guana oh. no, All right, guana banana. There it goes. Thank you, Audrey. <laughs> mm. Don't get judge a, me if I drink this too quick. A little, little toast action. Let's get to the cooking because, like I said, I've been waiting two days for this. This looks too good. The smells were crazy yesterday. All right. I'm ready for it. So, what are we putting on? What kind of oil do you use for this? Um, roasted garlic oil, roasted garlic tamo to build some flavor. Right. So, is this be. something? Did you, did you make this oil yourself? Because I'm getting into like making my own uh, dressings and oils. So, is this something you made yourself, or is this purchased at our favorite spot, Trader Joe's? Or oh no, they don't they don't sell this in the store. Okay. I'll say they sell roasted garlic oil, but the time that's a special touch. But okay. um, to make roasted garlic, um, roasted garlic oil, you pretty much put the oil in the oven with the roasted garlic, salt, pepper and then put it on low mm -hmm. and then you leave, leave it in for about like two to three hours so okay. it like builds up the flavor and it doesn't burn the garlic but it like caramelizes it and like the, the flavor actually seeps into the actual oil right so you're saying about two to three hours you yeah. have to, okay awesome i would All say right. you could do it in much shorter time but like if you want to just play safe and then just build it like go for slowly. that long yeah th that i would say sometimes period. longer is better awesome. well most of the time right okay fantastic all right so then we got this going on so do we just drop these in here or what do we have to season this with? Because I see that we have some pepper in here. Yep, um, so we have some dry jerk seasoning um, and then some of that sukir seasoning from yesterday. Right. So I'll give you some some hints. There's some paprika, some cayenne, some roasted garlic, um, salt. Um, there's salt, pepper, and the rest, can't tell you. Oh, it's a secret? <laughs> yeah, the rest I mean, of it is like, a secret. Can you like send me a text? I just, got like, you. Tell me, okay, okay, I got you. Or Everything a bottle it and I'll, I'll just give you something. It's okay, like every time you need some, you could just come re up. I like, <laughs> I, like I like where this relationship is going. I, I appreciate this. It's very cool. Okay, so we have this going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, so can you just tell me a little bit about your upbringing? Because um, this is actually the first time I've been around this neighborhood, this part of the Bronx, mm -hmm. and you've lived here all your life, right? So, so when it comes to food and culture, what are the types of um, things that actually kind of influenced you growing up and you as a chef? What kind of foods did you grow up with? What can we find around this neighborhood? Because again, your family's restaurant is not too far. Yeah. So I'm assuming there's there's a there's a good portion of Caribbean restaurants around here as well. Yeah. Um. There's a good amount of restaurants over here. I, I actually grew up in the South Bronx, mm -hmm. so um. There's a lot more like Spanish culture, and like I grew up like eating mafungo and like right. a lot of like right. Spanish dishes, and then like also have family over here, and it's like primarily Jamaican around here. So like there's like a lot of beef patty shop, like mm -hmm. patty shops where you can find like multiple different um, types of patty. Okay. Um, so I, ha I have to ask you something. You mm -hmm. said you grew up eating ma mostly mofongo. Like do you mofongo. Have, do you have any uh, thing against mangu? Is, is that no, something? I love, okay. All right. So I usually, good. for me, it's like you know, <laughs> I'll, I can usually tell the character of a person. It's like you know, like <laughs> the character or, of a <laughs> mofongo. Um, oh, there we uh, go. There it goes. There's that sizzle we didn't get yesterday. Beautiful. Oh wow. 
Awesome. So when I put the salmon in the pan, I, I move it around so it gets a nice even color on it mm -hmm. and it evens out the heat in the pan. That is amazing. I'm already, okay, that's beautiful. I really, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just like totally in awe of this right now. Nah, you're good. <laughs> this, if you guys could smell what I'm smelling, you would understand that this is like the real deal right now. This is so good. So are we putting more salmon in here or what are we putting in this one? Um, we're putting the brown rice in here. Okay. So our, our full dish will be done at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we'll have everything to eat one shot. Oh, beautiful. So these right here, this plate right here, this is uh, crushed plantains, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, I made some plantain chips and then dried them out in the oven mm -hmm. and then um, chopped them up in a robo coop. Because I, I know that some people that uh, use plantain chips in the recipes usually buy them like prepackaged, I guess. Yeah. You made these if, yourself. If I'm, if I'm crunched on time, I could buy them. Okay. But these are, these are yours. Yeah. You right? guys gave me enough heads up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've had so much time between yesterday and today. So <laughs> you definitely had time to make some, some plantains. So this is the stir fry, correct? Mm -hmm. So what else is going to go in that skillet there? Um, the rest of the, the peppers, onions... Um, garlic and ginger. And ginger. Mm -hmm. Okay. I say some some people like to add the vegetables first, but um, when I'm doing brown rice, I like to get a nice nice coat on it because it's like nutty and like since it's a shorter grain, I'll separate it in the middle and then add the the vegetables in the center so okay. like the heat can actually get on the vegetables. Right. Do you have a I mean Do you have a preference for what type of rice you you use for most of your recipes or? Um. No, nah, it all de depends on what I'm making. But um, like I just like this this type of rice because it's like crunchy, nutty, and it's a little healthier, okay. healthier for you because it still has the husk on it. Right. Okay. And I it's see. not bleached. I see. Right. Right. That's that's right. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, food and finance high school? Yeah, I would say I'm actually speaking there tomorrow, which oh, is awesome. Oh, awesome. So um, I went there for all four years of high school, and. Yeah, they have a good program. Like, I have, like, a good relationship with all my teachers, like, mm -hmm. still to this day. Like, and, like, one of my favorite teachers retired a few months ago, so. <laughs> Were you in charge of the food? No. <laughs> that... uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it. Like, I told him I'll meet up with him when I come back to the city. Mm, and now, okay. Now I'm here. Right, so. <laughs> right, right. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so the salmon here, um, how long do you usually put these on for? Um, around, like, seven minutes. Okay. Seven minutes, it should fully cook through. Okay. And are we gonna are we gonna just ignore these pieces here? Yeah, those are those are for the, I know, the I know after Steve, hours. I, I know Steve, our cameraman, is like super <laughs> hungry. He's eyeing this out right now. He specifically said, "Y'all better feed me." So I want to feed Steve. So I want to make sure he's happy today, and we all get home safe and sound. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I just don't want to do this. Okay. So Steve, you, Steve, this is yours. Straight up, we promise you one, two, three, four, five pieces. Don't give the man any less than five pieces. Okay. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to get an email. Nothing. <laughs> um, so tell me, um, when exactly you started your culinary career? When did you um, find your passion uh, being a chef? Um, like, I knew I wanted to do culinary since I was, like, young because of, like, my family's restaurant, like, the, right. the Itaw restaurant we have. We, we had. Um, they moved to Connecticut, so mm -hmm. it's not open anymore. Um, moved, moved the business to CT. So... Mm -hmm. I found out that I liked culinary, like I loved helping in the kitchen, and then my grandmother like brought the family together anytime there was a holiday. Yes, right. So right. like, always that family atmosphere whenever there's food around, and I saw how much joy it brought to people. Mm -hmm. So did you spend like a lot of time in the kitchen, um, perfecting your recipes, kind of like you know having like epic fails where you would try to make different flavor profiles and maybe that didn't work out? Um, were there any moments that you sort of felt? that you couldn't do this or were you just going straight through and saying to yourself, this is what I want to do regardless of, you know, my bad days at the kitchen or my good days? Um, it was, it all started with kind of like necessity because mm -hmm. like we, me and my, like my family, um, whenever we're here, like the, the family would kind of come go, they would go to work, make us some food, but then we're, we just eat, like right. eat and eat and eat. Right. So we would just start finessing up stuff in the house, like with what we had. Right. So I was like, honestly, I, I think I could do this. Right. Like, I think I could so that, do this. So, like, so basically, you said it, it's, it was out of necessity that you found this passion for, for mm -hmm. cooking. So does, besides your family's restaurant, did you go out a lot or did you mainly choose to stay home and, and again, perfect certain recipes and, and cook certain dishes? Um, a little bit of both because I like to have fun. Mm -hmm. But then also, like, I would, I also really love my craft. So anytime, like, I have, like, a 
creative like idea it's like i have to figure out a way that i'm going to do that or when am i going to do that right right can you tell me one of your um most if not the most challenging mm -hmm. dish you've ever had to make in your career um i would say the most challenging thing i've had to make um was when i was working with a chef named um christopher young mm -hmm. it's like where it's like astronomy like food science where like they they brought us in the kitchen and we were like using like liquid nitrogen and like all this like sciencey stuff yeah. without I've never actually experienced and it was like a really like cool cool thing to see so like just like trying to grasp the concept of like things that I've never like seen or like seen at home or right. like just from scratch did you find that to be um beneficial to your to your understanding of how food is made yes when you sort of have like a different perspective on it yeah, I really loved it because like there's so many ways to do the same thing because mm -hmm. like we made like ice cream um, like with like liquid nitrogen like right. freezing it on the spot. So it's like making ice cream right right on the spot is cool. And then like we made like cryo fried steaks and like made wait, like wait, I'm sorry, hold on. Cryo fried steaks. Mm -hmm. How does that work? So um they they kind of dropped it in in the liquid nitrogen mm -hmm. and then like flash fried it at like 500, like 550, like around 500 degrees, somewhere around there. And then like it gets like a real like hard crisp on the outside. Mm. And then it's like medium rare on the inside. Mm, okay. So it's like perfectly cooked. Oh, and amazing. then it's like crispy on the outside and then perfectly cooked on the inside. I mean, I've heard of uh, I've heard of cryo ice cream, of course, and I've seen it being done, but I've never heard of uh, cryo fried steak. That's it's very, very cool. So let's get back to this dish. What did you just add to the stir fry here? Um, that is the, the, the beans, the um, snap peas. So chopped them up so we can get some color in there and mm. some texture. Okay, wonderful. And then what else from here do we have to add? What's the rest of the, the, the ingredients that are gonna go into here? The rest of the ingredients are a little bit of garlic and then just the soy sauce. The soy I try sauce. to add the garlic and the ginger closer to the end so they don't burn. Right, okay. Yeah, because injury burns up so so mm -hmm. fast. Okay, wonderful. Um, I'm gonna have to, would it be all right if I just grab one of these right here? Yes, because, sir. Okay, thank you. Because you had actually given me some of these. And the smell is just too amazing. And I'm like a, I'm like a fat kid in the kitchen. I just, <laughs> That's the hungry Dominican, the name yeah, fits. Yeah, right? So I have if to play. If the shoe fits. Right? Where? I gotta play up my name. Um, this is really good. This is so good. In the course of this show, I've, I've met a lot of wonderful people from the Bronx, and I've gotten a lot of uh, great reception about putting certain Bronx chefs on, on TV and on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and, I've, and I've actually had people ask me for advice about their culinary careers. And I feel mm -hmm. like it's you know not my realm to sort of give someone advice on their career when it comes to being a chef, but what would you have advice for? Like, What kind of advice would you give someone from the Bronx mm -hmm. who wants to be a chef who wants to go forward in this in this world, what's the best piece of advice you can give them? Um, the advice that I kind of follow myself is once you hit the, the cap of learning at no matter where you're at, mm -hmm. it's time to be out. Right. Like, because if, if you can't learn anything, then you've reached a peak. Okay. So like if you're at a restaurant and you feel like you're just going in and doing the same thing every day, time to go. Like no, no offense to them. Right. So unless you're moving up the chain and you're making more money, sometimes the money's not even it. So right. it, essentially, it's like you have to have the passion for it. You have to want to continue, you know, going forward. And if you feel like you yourself are not that type of person, it's just time to, to basically. So you basically, basically what you're saying is that you have to really be in this thing because I know that it's a very competitive world. I know that much. Yeah. I know that chefs go through a lot of stress. And uh, we, touched, we, we, you and I touched upon this a little bit, how, you know, much this can affect you mentally. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a really strong character yeah. to survive in, in the chef world, in the cooking world, right? So that's basically your, your advice. You yeah. have to have a strong character. You have to have a strong character. You have to be able to take some hits, right? Yeah, because in a restaurant, no matter how many how many days you think you might be doing the same exact thing, right. you never know what curveball you might get. Right. Like, there's always a curveball. Yeah. Like, like yesterday, the fire right. might be off. I've been in right. middle of events. Just and like, like yesterday's the, the episode. Just off. It was a massive <laughs> curveball. <laughs> we, sur we survived it. And, and again, you were, you were so gracious, you were so great about it, and you had told me after we wrapped up, um, you were giving me examples of, of things that happened in the kitchen and certain uh, places that you cooked. And you, you do have a very cool demeanor about you. I think one of the coolest ones that I've met chef-wise, <laughs> because I've, I've met some chefs that are just completely, 
I, you know, just bonkers because it's just like <laughs> they deal with so the, much. The stress gets to them. Exactly. Don't let the, the stress, stress get right. to you. And I feel like that, the, the stress getting to them becomes this character trait where everything is just like they're always on edge. You know what I mean? And I think mm. you do a wonderful job of not being on edge. Yeah, um, honestly, like, I, it's just part of, like, my personality where I feel like no matter what you do, like, you can't let your judgment or the way you react to something be clouded by what's going on right. because that's when you make the, the worst decisions. Right. Like, you don't make the best decisions when you're under pressure. You let the stress get to you. So I, I would assume that you're not the type of person who gets affected if someone says, oh, I don't like this certain dish. No, I'll just um, ask why. Right. Like, why? Because it could be an, an array of things because you can't make anybody like texture. That's one thing I know as a chef. Like, I can make anybody like anything flavor-wise. Mm -hmm. It's like, once you explain to me why you don't like it, it's like, no, I'll get you to like it. But once it's texture, can't do anything about right. that. Right, right. Like, I mean, and also food is very subjective. It's like, so mm -hmm. many people are gonna have different reasons why they don't like certain things. But again, it's like, you seem to be someone who does not get that affected by, you know, stressful situations, or someone who might say, hey, chef, I don't really like this dish. And you're just basically saying, I'll just ask you why. Yeah. And then you sort of learn from there and you go forward. Yeah, because everyone has a different, different palate. I try to make sure all my dishes touch all the senses. So right. like all the like all the flavor senses, so like sweet, sour, savory, umami, mm -hmm. like make sure that everything gets touched. So like right now the the curry sauce is the sweet, mm -hmm. this is spicy. Um this is more on the savory side. Um the seasonings and the car the um jerk is like the salty. Right. So yeah, try to make sure that every part of the dish like comes together. It's like a whole experience. Yeah. Much like the the, the events that you, you partake in and because uh, we talked about how you have, you know, you juggle both fashion and food. And for you, it's like when somebody walks into one of your events, the experience starts the moment they walk in, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's, it's a visual experience. It's an uh, oral experience when they taste, you know, the food that you make, which, by the way, this stir fry looks incredible. Incredible. So <laughs> Thank you. And the plating. And the plating's on point. I can't plate for, for my life. I'll tell you that much. I know how to put food on plates. I just don't know how to plate myself. But this is beautiful. Oh, this smells so good. Oh, my God. So good. It's, it smells delicious. I'm sure it is delicious. How? Let me ask you a question. Because you're very good at plating, I, I always wondered this. Um, I mean, this might be really silly, but like, this takes a certain amount of precision to, to make. You have to, You have to be very careful with this. Does it kind of, does it affect you when people just like go at it? Just like super hardcore, just destroy this like beautiful oh, no. decoration like that's, that's you've what, made? I mean, I know mean, it's the point, that, but that I just makes, feel like... That's flattering. Okay. That, okay. that means that I did my job because like like we were talking about yesterday, you eat with your eyes first. Right. So it's like if, if I got that, that reaction, then I'm happy. I mean, I, I'm at a point where like if I were to do something as nice as this, I feel like at least take two minutes to take all the pictures <laughs> first and then like, you know, eat it. We got the plantain chips right on top of the salmon. Oh, that's a beautiful move. This is, is, is Steve gonna get the same amount of uh, love and care? Yes, because he is. I need, I I need to make sure Steve is- I uh, the same experience. Cause Steve is eyeing me out right now. <laughs> I see you, Steve, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Steve has a huge side. So it's like, I just wanna make sure he gets the, the same love and care when it comes to his trips. And then we, of course, we have a little uh, accoutrement here. Mm -hmm. Little uh, little toppings to make it look even prettier. You know what? Um, I, I don't even have my phone on me. I, I feel so bad. I need to take a picture of this because this looks super pretty. But I'll, I'll deal with that later because I'll, I'll figure it out. Maybe like in post or something. We'll just have me here and then I'll just disappear <laughs> and I'll come back with my phone and I'll take a picture real quick because this looks lovely. This is awesome. And um, so the, the stir fry, is this uh, an original recipe of yours? Did you? Yeah. Um, okay. So I don't really like repeat a lot of recipes. So everything I do is kind of like on the fly and then I come up with something. So that's that's an amazing thing. You actually, we, we were talking after the show yesterday, you do not repeat your recipes. Yeah. You usually go for something new all the time. Yeah. Is that difficult to find a new recipe all the time? Um, not really, unless like I'm um, just under like a lot of pressure from like time. Cause mm -hmm. like, since I have to do it, like everything like pri primarily alone, since like I travel for when I'm cooking and can't afford two flights. Right. Like, can't afford two flights. <laughs> right. So like, um, unless I'm crunched for time, then no. It's a, um, it's a new recipe. New recipe, because right. every time I travel, like I gain a little bit of um, like background from like the last place I traveled and try to yeah. create something that's like a part of that culture. Like when I came back from Spain, I was cooking a bunch of Spanish food, like just right. like a lot of saffron, a lot of like, like um, paellas. Mm -hmm. 
So you, so so yeah, I, I wanted to ask you. I mean, you you do a lot of traveling and, and you experience a lot of different foods, and of course that affects what you make yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens if again, like you you don't have that perpetual motion where you're always traveling and going places? What happens recipe wise? Do you just start experimenting and just make your own thing, or do, are you primarily affected by the foods that you have when you're traveling? Um, I'm primarily affected by like the foods that I'm traveling, fashion, or like. Whenever I literally have downtime and uh, see something that I like, yeah. it's like, how would I do this dish? And then I come up with like, uh, I actually just got my phone back, so I thought I lost all those recipes. I have like, like a note with like maybe like 80 recipes that I've never made. Oh, man. So like, whenever it's like, oh, I'm hitting a wall or a rut, it's like, all right. Wait, but you're, you're saying that the, you're saying that those recipes process. those recipes weren't even on the cloud? I mean, that's that's how bad it was. Like you lost yeah, your I phone just, and you I were just, just thinking. I just write like whenever I'm down, it's like. Oh, got man. downtime or like uh, idea sparks in my brain. It's like, all right, that that sounds like it would be dope. Like, That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Chef. Um, so uh, this right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna taste this, but I do have to take a picture of it. All so, right, I this got is, you. This is awesome. But I want to thank you for again uh, being our guest, being super awesome yesterday. Thank you for giving us this location today. Super beautiful here. It's a beautiful day, and you've been just. A, a friggin' rock star, man. So thank you, Chef. And no guys, problem. we're gonna wrap it up, but um, I want you to go on Instagram, check out Chef and Taylor on IG. Um, yes, Chef Hezekiah, thank you so much. Uh, you have a beautiful Instagram. You have some really great videos and some uh, food stuffs up there. So guys, thank you. And I just wanna give a shout out. Oh, hi, hello. Am I looking over here? Where am I looking? Hi, hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's live to tape. I don't care, whatever. So guys, thank you for watching the show. Um, it's been quite an adventure uh, the last two days. It's a very special episode of Footy Down Bronx. Uh, remember to find us on Footy Down Bronx, yes. on Instagram, uh, BronxNet, Optimum67, Fios33. Thank you, Chef, again, my man. No problem. You've been awesome. Thanks thank for you, having brother. me. Thank you so much. I'm going to enjoy this, guys, the salmon stir fry. I'm going to take some pictures. I would eat this right now, but i got to take a picture. It's very important for my Instagram. So find <laughs> me, The Hungry Dominican. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful time watching this bonkers, insane, crazy episode that I actually kind of love because we had to improvise. Sanji, you're the best. Steve, you're the best. Nathaniel, thank you, sir. Shout you guys are a rock star team. So guys, thank you. We'll see you next time.